Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CVP Nets video series on STL algorithm series and this video is about is sort function provided into your STL algorithm. And I want to create this video for the sake of the completeness of this whole series and few people might find this interesting. So the whole purpose of this video is check if the element in range, whatever the range we will give are sorted or not. Meaning, see, you have this vector here and I'm sorting it just forget this greater for now and and yeah one more thing if you are watching this video i would recommend please watch the previous video of this series which is about stl sort i explained this uh, yesterday i mean yeah before this video so you should watch this video first and you should watch this one next to that it will be very helpful because i have explained what are the different ways you can sort and what is the actual algorithm used into the sorting and how you will do the parallel execution okay so i explained all these things in previous video so consider watching that first and then come back here so we were talking about is sort function provided into your stl algorithm so for that you need to first verify that okay your data is sorted or not so first i'm sorting this vector here with this sort function and let's just print that and this is the function is sort is a function available into this algorithm and it will return true or false so let me so let's quickly print this see it is printing one two three four five till nine and then this last one is meaning it is true meaning this is actually sorted so the the default behavior the default sort it is thinking is increasing order yes obviously that's why I have written non-decreasing order, meaning increasing order. So the default one is increasing order. Let me uh, change that. I can give greater here and integer. That's it. And so many people were asking me in the comment that why I keep typing this STD even if I have included this using namespace STD. So it's kind of a habit because generally in our project we don't have this. So that's why I keep doing this STD STD but we don't have to do it if you have this one. And why I include this here because I do not want to write STD again and again but I still end up doing it. So yeah you don't need this. So greater meaning it is going to sort in descending order. And now we are going to check whether it is sorted or not. It will show you zero. Let me save this, compile this. Hey guys, it's time for a quick pause. And what you're seeing right now is my Patreon page. So if you don't know what is Patreon, it's a crowdfunding website where you can support any content creator like me. And in return, you get rewards. So. If you join me, I can be your private tutor or you just want to chat with me and ask your doubts or maybe you just want to support me with very small amount and I'll still have something for you. So do visit my Patreon page and see if you like it. And if you want to discontinue anytime, you can do that. So if you have already visited my Patreon page, let's continue our video now. And execute this. See, this time it is zero, meaning it is saying that it is not sorted. Whereas it is actually sorted, but it is sorted in descending order. So how you will do that then? Then just try this. We can give greater here and that's it. Let's compile this. And this time this algorithm will see that, oh, I'm supposed to verify whether it is sorted in descending order or not. So see, it is giving one, meaning it is true. So this is sorted in descending order. So this is a very common and very small job, but when you are using STL, then it's always good to use everything that is available in STL. Do not have to write your own for each or for loop so that you can verify that, okay, one element is always less than another element if it is coming after. You can do that just by using this is sort function. Now, wait a minute. This is very trivial. I mean, you are using this integral types and we are able to do this very quickly. But what if it is a user defined data type? I have explained in this video, previous video, how you will do it. So you will exactly do the same thing. If you have user defined data type, you will overload this function. Okay. And it will work for that. And I'm keeping this exercise for you guys. I'm not going to do this because it is not that logically great that we, we should talk about it. It's just that you should have this practice. Okay. So in previous video, I have already explained if you want to 
apply the same knowledge you can apply meaning you can create that point class here and have different different objects like we have here see we have three objects here and then you can sort them and you, after that you can write is sort function and actually see whether it is actually checking or not so it's like a homework for you so whatever we were able to do into this sort function uh, these different types we can still do these things in this is sorted also because you know what if you are actually checking one object is less than another object then you have to support this user defined data type right so it is actually supporting so don't worry about that it's just that you have to do the practice so by this we'll complete here and tomorrow we'll see partial sort this is very important and very interesting so keep watching keep learning take care bye bye